In this video, you will be writing your first unit test inside of Django. To do this, we are going to take the budget application, which I built in another video series. I made some minor adjustments to it and improvements, but anyway, it shouldn't be too mandatory. We'll be going through the code anyway, as soon as we start testing it. Just visit this page. The link is going to be in the description. Click on clone or download and then grab the link. Then fire up a command line. And now type in git clone and then paste in the link. Okay, now we can change directory to Django testing tutorial. And in here we can change to the budget project. As you can see, I included a requirements.txt file, which is where we are going to install everything from. This series is going to use Django 2.1.2, by the way. If you don't have virtual env wrapper installed already, make sure to pip install virtual env wrapper. And this is what we're going to use to encapsulate all of our requirements. So next up, let's mk virtual env. And I'm going to name this testing tutorial. And this is going to create a new virtual environment for us. You can see that it's now automatically activated. And if we ls again, you can see the requirements.txt file. And to install our dependencies from the requirements file, just to see what is in there, we can type in cat requirements.txt. And you can see Django and PYTZ. So just type in pip install dash r and then requirements.txt. And it's going to install both of these packages. We now want to spin up the development server to assert that everything is fine. So manage the pile run server. And you can see that it fired up on port 8000. So let's visit that in our browser. And there we have it. Just in case you don't know what this is about, let's quickly step through this and you know, just see how this application works before we start testing it. Now, one side note, of course, in real development, you would be testing it while writing your code or even before writing a certain snippet, which would be test driven development. We're going to talk about TDD later on. But in this case, I think it just makes sense to focus on the testing 100%. So yeah, we get this alert, which says, sorry, you don't have any projects yet. And then we can click on add project. This will give us a nice form. So let's type in the name of mobile app and then a budget of 10,000. And the expense categories are going to be, let's say development and then hit enter and also design and again, hit enter. And then we can click on start project. And now we can see our total budget, which is $10,000 as we specified. And then you can also see our budget that is left because we haven't added any expenses yet. And then our total transactions, which is zero. Let's now click on add expense. As a title, let's say first mockup, I don't know, 1000. And then let's choose design and add. And now you can see first mockup and it cost us $8,000. Now our budget left is only 9,000 and we have one total transaction. So this is basically what this app does. Let's now open this inside of an editor. I'm going to use Atom. So we're going to start testing this application just like Django basically processes a request. We'll be starting off in the URLs in this tutorial, then moving on to the views, then to the forms and to the models as well. And these are all components we're going to test from start to finish. Just don't worry, follow along. And I think at the end, you're going to get quite a lot out of it. Although it's not going to be perfect by any means. But yeah, let's get started. By default, Django adds this test.py file to any application. We're going to delete this. Yes. After deleting the test.py file, let's now create a new folder called tests. And in this, we are going to basically map all of the files we want to test to a testing file. So the first one is going to be test underscore urls.py. Then also test underscore views.py. Then we can also 
create one called test underscore models.py and test underscore forms.py. Simply enough, let's start out in the test URLs file. We'll be creating a new class called test URLs and this inherits from simple test case. You can use simple test case anytime you don't need to interact with the database basically. So at the top from Django.test, import simple test case. And all of your classes or test classes are going to inherit from some kind of test case or in this case, simple test case. The way that tests are detected is that Django looks at a file which starts with test, then looks for classes which also start with test and then for functions, which as you would guess, start with test as well. So if we go back to our URLs, you can see that our first path is called list. So let's create a function called test list URL is resolved. This takes in the self parameter. Instead of getting fancy now with the test already, let's simply assert that one is equal to two. To run the test inside of our budget app, let's now type in manage.py test and then the application name or the app name. In this case, it's budget. And you can see that we ran zero tests. Okay. Why is that the case? The problem is that we created a test folder without creating the file, which is called underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. So the dunder init file. That's going to be important for the test runner to find our tests. So back in our command line again, let's rerun the command. And you can see the assertion error, which is of course what we expected. So everything now is set up correctly. To write our tests for the URLs, Let's go up top and make a couple of imports. From Django.urls, we want to import the reverse function and also the resolve function. If we go back to our URLs file, you can see that the name is list. We don't have any app name or namespace in this case. So the name is simply list. And we want the path with the name of list to resolve to this project list view. So from budget.views, let's also import the project list and what else we have, we have project detail and the project create view too. So let's import them as well, project create view. Okay. But for this one, we only need the project list. So let's set the URL equal to the reverse of list. And then we can use the resolve function to pass it a URL and then see which view Django is going to call as soon as that URL is hit. This is what Django uses internally, by the way. So first of all, let's just print resolve URL and rerun our test. You can now see the resolver match object. What interests us the most is this function here. So basically we just need to exit the function and then we can assert that the correct one is called. And unit test uses a variety of testing methods in this case, we need to use the self.assert equals. Oh, we don't need to use it, but in this case, it makes sense. There are other ones and we are going to talk about them as well. But this one just asserts that two arguments that we pass that are equal. So self.assert equals, and we want to make sure that the resolved url.func, again, this here, is equal to the project underscore list. So let's rerun it again. And now we ran one test in 0 0.003 seconds. So that was successful now. We can copy this over and do the same thing for our other URL, which is this add one. So we want to reverse the add now. And now we're also going to replace the project underscore list with project create view. And let's rerun our tests. You can see that we have an assertion error where the function of project create view isn't equal to the class, which is of course true. But you might notice that this is now a class based view. However, there's a very simple fix for the situation. On the dot func, we can also call dot view underscore class. And it's going to resolve our error. So awesome. By the way, this is just one way of going about this. There are many other ways to test everything basically. So yeah, let's now copy this over.
And also, let's just make sure to change the names by the way, so every test is also run. Uh, test list URL, let's call this resolves, that's better. And there's going to be test project create URL resolves. Oh, test add URL, that also works. And then let's call this, uh, yeah, the detail URL, test detail URL resolves. Then we're going to change this to detail and the view that is now left. Okay, it ran three tests and we have one error. And the error is of course that there is no reverse for detail without any arguments. If we go back to our URL definition, then you can see that we need a slug to make this reverse. So let's go in here and set the arcs parameter equal to some slug. And now it works like we expected. Awesome. So let's wrap this up for now. I think it was enough for today. I hope you learned at least how to get started. In the next part, we are then going to dive into the views. In the meantime, make sure to check out the Django tips guide if you haven't already by clicking the link in the description. I hope to see you inside of the next one. Take care and cheers.